today, you're connected more than ever. Your friends, your family, your life. Having a partner that understands banking is what you do on your time, anywhere you like. It's about being connected. Renaissance Bank, understanding you. Sponsored by Renaissance Bank. Good morning, Northeast Mississippi. This is Newsbreak for Tuesday, October 18th. I'm Brad Locke. Thanks for joining us. You can find Newsbreak every Monday through Friday at 7 a.m. You can watch it at djournal.com, our Facebook page, our YouTube channel, or our app for your Apple or Android device. Let's start now with a look at your weather underground forecast. Today, partly cloudy skies get a high of 90 degrees, low of 65, a 10% chance of rain. The three-day outlook, Wednesday, partly cloudy, a high of 88, low of 67, 20% chance of rain and then uh, on Thursday things cool off and we're probably going to get wet thunderstorms likely with a high of just 78 low of 54 the chance of rain is 90 percent and then on Friday clear skies a high of just 68 a low of 44 10 percent chance of rain finally starting to feel like October okay let's take a look now at some of your top stories from the Daily Journal and djournal.com while there has been a shortage of rain over the last two months there is no shortage of water for Northeast Mississippians Water suppliers say they have plenty of capacity to handle the increased demand from customers watering their yards. Tupelo Water and Light Director Johnny Timmons said customers have been using more water lately, and Timmons said the biggest demand is in West and Northwest Tupelo, where there are a lot of subdivisions with newer homes and sprinkler systems. For years, most of Northeast Mississippi relied on well water from the Utah McShan Aquifer. Increasing demands prompted Tupelo to switch to surface water from the Tom Bigby River. Timmons said Tupelo has not had an issue since making the switch. Also, when Tupelo stopped using the well water in 1991, the aquifer began refilling. Saltillo Mayor Rex Smith said the aquifer is in great shape. He doesn't anticipate any problems for that city's water supply. Celebration Village will throw its doors wide open this week. The annual holiday market will feature 140 vendors bringing clothing, art, jewelry, decorations, fashion, home accessories, cooking ware, and more from across the southeast. It supports the work of Sanctuary Hospice House. The event is held at Tupelo Furniture Market Building 5 and will begin with Wednesday's preview party. Doors will open at 5.30 p.m. and they will begin serving hors d'oeuvres at 6.30. Tickets for the party are $50. Shopping continues from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. on Thursday and Friday and from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. on Saturday. The daily shopping pass is $5 in advance and $7 at the door. Friday's Girls' Night Out includes shopping, food, dancing, and pamper stations. Breakfast with Santa will be held on Saturday morning. Those events require separate tickets. 2016 Chairwoman Joy Kellum said this year's event includes old favorites as well as some new treasures. And meanwhile, the much-anticipated auction of the tiny house has been delayed until the spring to give crews more time to complete the project. A couple charged with robbing a Pontotoc County post office last month will remain in federal custody until the case is heard by a grand jury. Angela Roy and Richard Thomas Scott are accused of robbing the Randolph post office on September 23rd and shooting postmaster Virginia Duff during the incident. A preliminary hearing and a, and a detention hearing were held for Roy and Scott on Monday in Oxford with U.S. Magistrate Judge Roy Percy ordering them held until the resolution of the case. Scott has been charged with assault and armed robbery of a postal employee, while Roy is charged with aiding and abetting the assault and armed robbery of a postal employee. The two have also been connected to car burglaries in Nettleton and Pontotoc. The grand jury is expected to hear the case in about two weeks. And in sports, Ole Miss coach Hugh Free said that Ed Orgeron was close to succeeding at Ole Miss when he was running the program. At his Monday press conference, Free said a little more patience might have changed things dramatically for both Orgeron and Freeze, who was an assistant during Coach O's tenure from 2005 to 2007. Orgeron posted a 10 and 25 record in Oxford, including a 3 and 21 mark in SEC play. But Free said the Rebels had recruited very well, and at the time, the coaching staff felt Ole Miss was close to turning a corner. This week, Orgeron will face his old team and Ole Miss visits LSU. Orgeron was named interim head coach earlier this season after Les Miles was fired, and he is 2-0 in his new role. Saturday's game kicks off at 8 p.m. in Baton Rouge. 
And that's it for news break today. We do want to remind you about one of the podcasts we produce here at the Daily Journal, The Memo, every Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday with myself and W. Derek Russell, all things Northeast Mississippi news and entertainment. Had a new episode yesterday. You can go listen to that for free in iTunes, your podcast apps, or at memo.djournal.com. We spoke with Bobby Harrison about education funding. We spoke with William Moore about what the Family Resource Center is up to, and also with Dennis Sid about Cooper Tire. All the stories I talked about today you can find in your Daily Journal or at djournal.com. Follow us on Twitter at djournalnow and give our Facebook page a like as well. That's it for news break today. We'll be back tomorrow. Until then, I'm Brad Locke. Have a good one.